Let's hit record. <laughs> so, welcome everyone to Happy Life Habits Inspiration Point Series 3, Episode 5. So, we're on our penultimate episode of uh, the series, and we have um, Sonal Dove with us. Um, she is um, a Toastmaster, a celebrant, a public speaker, and helping to teach both adults and um, children um, confidence skills. Um, and she'll explain to us what a celebrant is. And uh, she's also a voluntary magistrate, uh, which I found out last week. So lots of um, skills um, 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 she has, which we'll um, um, hear about today. So really warm welcome to everyone to um, the session. Um, for those of you joining for the first time, um, you know, a, a, a warm welcome to you. Uh, what we do is at the beginning, we'll have um, the videos on, but when we start the interview part, we'll ask you to switch your videos off, put yourself on mute, and then you can come back on afterwards for uh, a Q&A. Uh, so what we'd like to do is uh, we start with um, a question, and our question each week is, um, using a scale of zero to 10, but not using the number seven, but you're allowed to use fractions and you're allowed to use decimals, right now, just checking for yourself where you are on that scale. And if you're happy to, you can drop your answer into um, the chat box. But the key thing here is, especially those of you joining us for the first time, your number is unique to you. Your number six could be uh, uh, someone else's five. So the number and your scale is unique to you. So you do not worry about what anyone else has put. It's for you and it's there to raise awareness so you're just aware of where you are at this point in time. And if the number is, um, uh, less than what you would like it to be, then there's a couple of things you can do. So one is, um, at least by asking the question and thinking about what our number is, we've raised our awareness. Two, we have choice to choose what we want to do. And three, um, we can take action. And the simplest action you can do is put a smile in your face. And that will release some of the happy chemicals and it will lift your number. And all the things we share in Happy Life Habits are there to help increase that number. And if you are um, um, and want to help with that um, afterwards, you can get in touch and see um, some of the work we do to help um, increase that number. So we've got a, yeah, a wonderful range of um, numbering there. Uh, thank you all for sharing. But even if you don't share, at least take a checkpoint for yourself to see what your number is. And I will share that I am actually a nine at this moment in time. Um, uh, and I will explain in a moment why that is. And at the end of the session, we'll check in again to see where you all are. So the reason I'm a nine is yesterday, uh, uh, my friend Debbie, who is on this call uh, with her um, two children, gave a surprise visit to, um, um, to myself. And she came over uh, um, and she brought a lovely cake. And this is the picture of the cake before we've got started onto it. It's a lovely huge cake. It's a cinnamon cake baked by her children. and the key ingredient in there is love, care and attention are key ingredients. And what she shared was that it was my 50th last um, September and we were during lockdown. So she was you know, thinking of creating the cake and passing it then. And obviously because the lockdown wasn't able to, Christmas came and went with, um, again, lockdown and so forth. So that opportunity uh, wasn't there. And so you know, Easter was there they had the opportunity to uh, create um, a, a cake um, thoughtfully, lovingly, and uh, came over and delivered it. And it was so lovely to see them and connect and have a you know, heartfelt conversation and just felt so blessed and grateful for um, the thoughtfulness and the delicious cake um, there. So that's um, one thing that happened. And in that spirit of paying it forward, um, what we're uh, doing as Happy Life Habits is saying that all of you who um, are on the call who um, uh, would like to invite a friend or join yourself, you can use the promo code GUEST for next week's session and you can join, which will be our final session next week for this series, and you can join um, uh, and get your friends and family to join next week with that code. So that's the idea of paying it forward. So please do take that opportunity and help create spreading this ripple further. So a couple of the grand rules. So our session is being recorded and will be uploaded onto um, YouTube, uh, the podcast platform, and onto the uh, websites 
um, accordingly and shared also you know, linked to, on Facebook and so forth. Um, for the duration of the session, if you could keep your mobiles in silent, if you can stay on mute yourself, apart from Sonal, of course, you can't not let stay on mute. Uh, have your videos off during the interview part. And at, when we come to the Q&A, you can switch your videos on and you can come off mute and you can ask a question directly or you can put it on the chat and um, uh, we can uh, work it in that manner. So that is um, what we're working with. Just a quick interest for those who aren't aware. Um, aware. I, I'm Shady Shah, I'm a happiness coach trained in the science of happiness and through happy life habits, positively impacting people's happiness and well-being levels. And one of our projects is this, Inspiration Point. And this is about being inspired by others, but to be yourself. And it's inspiring, positive, extraordinary people sharing their journey, their challenges and turning points, their daily habits and learning through personal development, happiness and spirituality. And what we find as we, each week when, um, and each episode when we've had, is we recognize and um, relate to what uh, our guest speaker has shared, because some of it is stuff we're doing or some of it's things we've done that we've forgotten, but we're also inspired by some of the things which we may not be aware of and learn and are able to then put into place. So it's a really nice um, format where uh, uh, we get reminded and also we get um, a, a learning opportunity to be inspired. And this whole one hour is focused on positivity, happiness, and just a general good um, uh, environment and feeling. Um, the kind of questions we ask, and these are ones you can think of for yourself as we do ask um, Sonal, um, what makes you happy? What are you currently doing that inspires you? What's been your journey and some of your challenges? Um, daily habits and uh, routines? And what's one of your favorite quotes? So those are the things um, uh, amongst uh, the questions that we ask. Um, Again, uh, uh, you know, really, truly blessed and um, grateful to um, Balance Consultancy and in particular Shundip for um, sponsoring the whole um, series, six episodes. And this whole series is dedicated to women, um, uh, dedicated to um, International Women's Day and Mother's Day. So, you know, we've had six wonderful women on, uh, or we'll have um, by the end of it, six wonderful women on the sessions. Um, on, the, on the series, and each of them we've labeled as a Wonder Woman because just amazing um, the things that they've been through in their lives to inspire us. Um, so, yep, uh, we've had um, Anja Shah, we've had Sasha, we've had Mary, uh, we've had Hansa, we've had got Sonal uh, today, and then we've got Garupa next week. Now, the interesting thing here is there's a couple of you know, linkages that um, I wasn't fully aware of before, which has kind of been coming through. So Sonal um, uh, will share that, uh, you know, one of the things that um, uh, has, uh, uh, one of the challenges that um, she has had is fibromyalgia. And if you remember for episode three, Mary shared with us uh, that she suffers um, um, or experiences fibromyalgia. And this was not something I, um, I had heard of or many of us had heard of before. So uh, that's a, a, a commonality that we have um, there that we've heard. Uh, um, come across and heard about. Um, also, um, Sonal then uh, uh, has a couple of dogs, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, some uh, dogs. And today um, I found out that um, Karupa has got a couple of puppies. And also Mary had shared she had a, a, a dog um, more recently. So there's a few similarities and connections that we've got coming through. But the important thing here is, as we hear each person's journey, as we hear um, uh, what they're sharing, what we do is we recognize a commonality there, but we also re recognize a uniqueness there. And that's um, what we want to you know, observe and look out for on that. So uh, as I um, did at the beginning of the introduction, I, oops, sorry. Um, as I did at the beginning of the um, session, uh, introduce Sonal Ben. She's a public speaker coach, a public speaker expert. She's a Toastmaster. Um, she is a celebrant, and she'll explain what that means. Um, she is also a singer, um, an actor. Um, she is a, a magistrate. So lots of different um, strings to her bow, but they're all very much um, uh, connected uh, uh, in some manner or another. Uh, and uh, uh, 
yeah, those, those are some of the ones that I can remember of uh, the skills and things she has. Um, what she has shared is she was born uh, with uh, congenital hip uh, dysplasia, and she's been in three car accidents, not her fault. She'll explain and share um, what congenital hip dysplasia is and share about the impact of those car accidents. Um, she, um, her, her motto is, you know, you just have to choose to want it and then go and get it. So dare to dream, dare to be different. The world is your stage. And the world is your stage brings through that, you know, performance part, brings through that sense of confidence there. And the dare to be different, you know, brings through the courageousness there. Um, so um, as I mentioned, you know, public speaking experts for both children and adults. Um, she runs workshops, she runs courses. Um, she's got online training um, uh, in the other realms, so we'll hear more about that and we'll hear about some of um, the things which are happening over the next couple of weeks, which she's um, offering. Um, oh, this is a really important one. She's an award-winning Asian female Toastmaster in, ceremony, in the ceremonies celebrated in the UK. Uh, she's one of the few um, Asian female uh, celebrants and um, Toastmasters. There's two in the world, so, oh, sorry, two in the country or in the world, you'll, ex you'll confirm. Uh, uh, two in the UK. Two in the UK. So she's one of those two. So uh, that's you know, a, a rarity there. She's, oh, I forgot the other thing. She's a published author. So recently she's had um, a part taken and um, a, 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 a book and he wrote, uh, written for a chapter in the book and launched that. And he's in the process of writing for a couple more books, which we'll hear about. Um, prior to all of these things, she worked in the civil service and she'll share um, some, uh, about her 20 years there and some of the challenges she faced there. Um, various um, impacts of you know, health related issues as, as we um, will hear about the congenital hip dysplasia and a, a, a few other factors and how some of the things she's done and some of the approaches she's taken are different from the norm, especially within the Asian community and how she's you know, um, not been afraid to push those barriers, whether it's, you know, uh, getting married at a late date or going down the career path or um, uh, or the phrasing of you know uh, living a full life even with challenges but so these are some of the things which uh, will come through um, uh, very much so in uh, what she shares um, so that is uh, the introduction to Sonal but I will share one more thing I first met Sonal a lot of years ago um, I think maybe 18 months or two years ago where um, I, I teach at um, a Jane School, SCVP, um, a Jane School run by Viriatum, and Shandip, who's uh, uh, our sponsor from Balance and Infancy, he knew Sonal, and he asked Sonal to come and share public speaking skills to uh, the youth in the school. So the ones who are going through the GCSEs and are slightly above that age, um, uh, 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 who are you know embarking you know to think about careers and needing these life skills. So at the school we teach values, we teach um, prayers, we teach history of Burma and all of these things. But these life skills was an important aspect. And Shendi asked uh, Sonal to come and share. And I was fortunate enough that with the class I was teaching were younger than that age of um, the GCC, um, were invited to partake in um, the session. So. Um, uh, 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 we, we part, uh, to part in that session, and Sonal then, um, uh, from a uh, height perspective, slightly shorter than some of us, but she came in, she held a presence, and she controlled this class of teenagers and uh, some who are, can be, uh, you know, a bit um, rebellious, um, and she controlled that class. She shared with them skills on public speaking and. After that session, with you know, many of the students in particular our class, we helped embed the learnings that Sonal has done and take that through over the next year or two. And those fruits we are seeing coming through in our youth in the things that they're sharing. So uh, really, you know, uh, wonderful. And she also did um, a session for uh, the ladies, um, confident speaking for the ladies at the school as well. So these are some of the sharings that Sonal then has done. So. Uh, with that uh, introduction, Sonal, then really, really long, uh, uh, lovely welcome to you. If I can ask, if everyone can just put your videos on, um, uh, on the off mode and keep yourself on mute, that would be great. And 
for your viewing pleasure, if you go to um, the Zoom controls where it says view, and if you put it on speak of you, you'll be able to see Sonal and myself uh, nice and big and, and be able to hear us nice and clean. So Sonal, really warm welcome. The thing I did forget to share, which I will share now is, um, as I mentioned, Sonal Bend um, has uh, um, the challenge of fibromyalgia, which causes tiredness and fatigue. And she's also um, been impacted by long COVID, which has uh, you know, similar impacts. So she's been resting all day today to keep her energy and her strength up for us for this next one hour. So really appreciate that. And really lovely welcome, Sonal. Thank you so much, Shailen. Hi. Um, it's quite interesting just checking the names that are all on today. And thank you for all 25 of you that are on right now. Um, that I do know many of you as Prina Ben and um, Burvi Ben and Shandip Pai. Uh, so it's quite, I'm like, okay, well, should we drop the pie on the Ben today? But we'll keep them all. But um, Shailen, that introduction, it kind of makes me think, I don't know what to say now. Um, you've kind of lifted me up so high and I'm only four foot nine. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I'm four foot nine, I'm 52. And uh, I am, although going through struggles in life, I'm still getting up, I'm smiling, and I'm still trying to make sure that I have a good day. And I, I know there's some questions that I've got to, got to answer. So shall we go straight into the questions? Absolutely. And the first question is, what makes you happy? So there's a number of things that makes me happy. I don't think I can actually say there's just one thing. And I definitely um, love the sound of children laughing. And I've got to be clear, this isn't the, the, the high-pitched screaming laughing. This is the genuine, innocent laughter of a child. Um, you know, if they suddenly see their favorite cartoon character or if their favorite auntie comes to the house, that kind of genuine inner, inner laughter. Sure. Um, my two kids, I have two kids of the four-legged kind that Shailen has already mentioned. Uh, we have great conversations with each other and they go something like woof, um, woof, 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 and then woof. And we somehow understand each other. So I think that's an achievement in itself considering uh, if those of you who've known me from years gone by would know I was scared of dogs and now we have two big Akitas running around our house who are 40 kgs so pretty big um, absolutely love the sound of my husband my husband Danny he plays guitar uh, professionally and does lots of events and just love the sound of the guitar it's just relaxing it's um the way he plays it it can sound like a sitar or a flute all different types of instruments but what makes it even better is when i get to sing along with him as well uh from the, from my public speaking side i would say what i really love and it's like an inner love um of happiness is when i see that journey of change so it could be the introvert child who gets to spend some time with me developing uh, skills they already have, but don't realize they have. And what happens after they've had a session with me, it could be an adult that's just really struggling to find a way to communicate, whether that's in the home environment, at work, in communities, charity work, wherever it may be, but just seeing that journey and that change of confidence and having the ability to say what they really want to say, what they're hearing, what they're feeling, you know, all those kind of things just, they make me happy because I really do feel that we are all entitled to have a voice. And unfortunately, um, these skills are not taught in school or in the workplace. So that's definitely something that makes me really, really happy. And uh, the final thing I'm going to add is chocolate, <laughs> chips, cake, and a couple of glasses of champagne. Don't go amiss, just to make me happy. The four C's you just the covered. <laughs> it would usually be courtesy, calm, I don't know, Compassion. <laughs> Compassion and something else, something, make, make up something else, but they're my four C's. <laughs> Fantastic. That's great. Thank you for that. Um, no, no, nice, uh, quite a nice, good range of that. And I think some of the things you were touching on there kind of lead us nicely into what are you currently doing that inspires you? And I think on this one, uh, 
with some of the different roles you play and the skill sets you build up, it would be nice to bring some of those through, like yeah. explaining what a celebrant is and um, the magistrate stuff that you shared with me as well. Definitely. So, um, so as a Toastmaster, so as mentioned earlier, there's only two Asian female Toastmasters. A lot of people have this image that a Toastmaster is an old white man. Now, hopefully you'll look at me and go, she's not an old white man. I hope that's what you're all saying behind your screens, because um, I'm not. And um, it, the, the funny story behind it all, it didn't start off funny because I spent 20 years in the civil service and I rose from being an admin officer through to being a deputy director quite quickly. But at each point I faced unconscious bias. I faced, um, for those of you who may not know what unconscious bias is, in, in summary, without going into too much detail, it's often where people recruit in their own image or people have an expectation of how somebody should look, how they should dress, how they should behave. Um, and I wasn't gonna do what Conform. they- Yeah, I was not gonna do that. So I did unfortunately deal with bullying, harassment, unconscious bias at different points in that 20 years. So when I did leave, um, I took a year out to kind of decide what I wanted to do next. And it was during that time that I was at a wedding and uh, there was um, an elderly gentleman in his red tailcoat looking very suave um, saying, and, and ladies and gentlemen, we now have the Akane Derso Pargivati. I remember looking at my dad going, what? What? What did he just say? And my dad said, Akanda so Oh, okay, dad, is that what he said? Okay. And it kind of made me think, well, hold on. I love people. I love events. I love communicating. Um, so I went off and got myself trained. Unfortunately, couldn't get myself an off the shelf uniform. So I had to have one specially made being four foot nine and petite has its um, challenges itself. And yeah, became one of the two uh, Asian female Toastmasters. And interestingly, the other female is also called Sonal. Okay. It was meant to be. Um, so that that definitely is one of the things that uh, inspi it inspires me because I've already got a few people who've said, oh, how do you become a Toastmaster? Mm -hmm. Oh, you do more than just make announcements. So those that have seen me in action have realized that the role of a Toastmaster is bigger than what they have seen themselves. So a celebrant is another thing that definitely inspires me. And that was something else that I went and did some training on after doing my training for being a Toastmaster. So in the UK, and I'm going to speak about the UK because that's where we all live. I think everyone on the call today. No, yeah, we've got a couple of overseas ones, but they've been in the UK. Cool. I'll <laughs> stick with the UK because that's the one I know well. Um, so in the UK, you kind of have two parts. You have the legal part and you have the ceremony. So you have a birth and then you'll have a naming ceremony or a chakti or whatever it is, according to your faith. You, um, you register your marriage and then you have a wedding ceremony. You, you unfortunately pass away and then you will have a funeral, cremation, burial. So a celebrant is somebody who conducts the non-legal part. So for example, you may go to a Hindu wedding and that will be under a mandap. You may go to a Sikh wedding and that could be in a Gurudwara. A Muslim wedding, um, you'll have the Imam come to where, where it's happening. But all of those are actually not legal in the UK. The legal part is the actual signing of the registry that you do with the registrar. Everything else is not legal. So if you decide as a couple, you want to have a wedding that's created, that's bespoke for you. So it could be that it's mixed faith. It could be LGBTQ. It could actually be two people from the same faith, but they're not religious. They're more spiritual. So you could actually have a ceremony that incorporates some of the Western rituals, but also include some of the um, Asian rituals. So the beauty of the celebrant ceremony is that it's bespoke and unique to you, the couple. You're not having um, what I've once heard a celebrant say is you're not having what everyone else is having. You're actually having a ceremony that's for you. And I think that's quite beautiful because 
you know, the whole concept of marriage and being together should start from the point that you meet your life partner. So everything you then do should be about the two of you, not what are the expectations of others. And that's the difference because it's the expectations that don't make us happy. Yeah. And that's often the challenge in this day and age. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then the public speaking side. So although I teach core public speaking skills to those who want it, particularly in the corporate sector, what I've done as well is focused on life skills. So life skills being communication skills, confidence skills, storytelling skills and interview skills, all skills that will help you through your journey in life from the age of four right through to your grandparents. Because these skills don't just stop when you finish studying. They don't just stop once you get to wherever it is you want to get to in your workplace. In fact, whether you're at nursery school, secondary school, 11 plus exams, exams, uh, interviews at work, interviews for school, college, uni, you know, the list is uh, mm -hmm. interviews for your life partner, who knows what happens these days. But you know, it just continues. And often where I find these skills are really useful is in the home. So in the home, that communication doesn't happen in the way that it could because we don't know how to communicate or we don't know when to communicate or how do we set the scene? What's the right time? You know, I've learned, I had to learn this myself that I shouldn't start a conversation with my husband as soon as he walks through the door. I should allow him to come in, take his shoes off, wash his hands, sit down, you know, maybe a bit later, just say, um, can we have a chat after dinner? And then have the conversation, not when he's still hot and flustered from just coming in. So all of that is so important for life skills. Other life skills that I don't teach, but others do, financial skills, organizational skills, um, negotiating skills, all of those things that we all know are just going to be so helpful in life. But unfortunately, they're just not in the curriculum and they're not in the learning and development directory for work, which is a real shame. But um, through the work I'm doing, I'm seeing immense success. And oh, my God, that just makes me so happy. Like um, an example, uh, a young woman that I was working with who really wanted this ideal job, but she knew that the person she was going up against was um, manager's mate. And I could understand that because I'd been through it. So I armed her with responses and we practiced them and I got her to video it so that she could see how she would look and what her face was doing, what her hands would do, what her body language was, so that when she went in, she was in control. She was confident. And, you know, when she came back and said to me, I got the job, I was like, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's things like that that just really inspire me and make me happy that I want to do it more. I want to help more people as, as much as the pandemic will allow me now, <laughs> but even more so once the pandemic is over. Um, so you, the magistrate side, you did yeah. mention that. So not a, lot, not, not a lot of people know I'm a magistrate. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> so I am, I'm a magistrate. I sit in Northwest London and I've been sitting since 2004. So I've been sitting a good number of years now. I used to sit on what's called the wingers and I now sit, well, in 2007, I became a chair. So I sit in the middle and I have my two wingers. So as a magistrate, I deal with adult crime. I choose to only deal with adult crime and I also deal with domestic violence. And with adult crime, an interesting thing that I just want to share with everyone, um, because I think it's important for people to understand, is that crime happens in all faiths. Um, we often, some of us, not all of us, may have grown up being told X people are bad or X religion are bad or this is good and this is bad. But actually, when you look across being a magistrate, it, it it's across all faiths, all religions, you know, all cultures, all creed. And what being a magistrate has done for me in particular um, is that I was a very in your face reactive person. And through being a magistrate, I've learned to step back or sit back in my big armchair on the bench and actually just put myself in other people's shoes. What is it that's put them in front of me? 
what's happened in their lives. And for many, you know, there is a story. There is usually a story of something that's happened that was never handled, managed, resolved, that has caused the almost triggers through life for them to end up in a courtroom. Mm. Even to the extent of, you know, a CEO who suddenly loses his business, yet he's got the house, the car, the, the wife, the children, and he focuses on the expectations of everyone around him and therefore does bad things to continue to live that lifestyle. Yep. But actually, I'd love to get in, in that CEO in front of me and say, stop focusing on expectations and focus on the fact that you still got your family. Mm. You know, and so this whole being a magistrate, um, there were not many, I, again, I, I became a magistrate in my 30s. And at that time, there were not many of us in that age group and I think I was probably again one of two must be a, a special thing one of two um that were Indian females um and I remember how everyone wanted to kind of hug me oh I'll look after you don't worry you're not on your own and I was like I'm fine I'm all right <laughs> I'm street cred I know what to do um you know and you go through the training and everything but it's quite interesting like just how it's inspired me to look at people look at people as people not as 10 people have just gone by you know shailen tracy devi bunko sonal but you know that actually they're individuals in their own right and each of them has a story to tell and each of them has led a life um and i think my, my friends that kind of know me from when i was a, a young raucous teenager would say you became magistrate and I'm like, yeah, I did. And actually, it's probably one of the good things that I did because how it's impacted me to be the the better person that I feel I am now. Um, and as Shailen said earlier, if any of you've got any questions, you know, please do put them in the chat and we will go through them um, a bit later. Um, you mentioned author. So yeah. uh, sorry, oh, just sorry. the author part, on the magistrate side. So I remember what you're saying is, so one of the things you've learned from doing it, which what, you, what you're sharing right now is it's you know giving you a better insight into human behavior and just uh, uh, yeah uh, 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 yeah into human behavior and some of the patterns there and also it's improved um, or highlighted that aspect of unconscious bias of you know, that to kind of occur so those were a couple of things there and the other thing I remember you shared was that so there was lots of training you needed to do to take on um, this role and it's a voluntary role so yes. it's not a, you know, a, a paid role it's something you do on a voluntary basis so uh, i do um when i was working for the civil service the civil service actually gave me 18 days a year um to go and be a magistrate but when i left the civil service who gives me those 18 days I give myself the days <laughs> and yes, it's a voluntary role. Um, there are some people that, you know, will be a magistrate for the day and they'll show their accountants um, uh, returns and get paid for 18 days. But I actually have chosen to just do it on a voluntary basis um, because actually I feel it's my, it's one of my ways that I'm giving back to society. And one of my ways that actually I find I'm sometimes educating um, other magistrates around me because um, some of the older magistrates may not necessarily understand what's happening on the streets, how easy it is to get access to things, how tough it can be as, um, you know, somebody in their 20s trying to survive in today's world, whether that be because of marriage, trying to buy a house, um, or even trying to cope with their own child who's going down a wrong path. So I find there's a number of facets that definitely through my work as a magistrate that I am um, kind of feel quite honored to do. Um, uh, my husband always laughs because um, I tend to usually do my magistrate stuff on Thursdays or Fridays. So um, he always comes home and says, hello, mom. Um, and and I'm <laughs> we have a little giggle about it because it's whenever you're in court, you're called, you know, your mom. 
Oh, I was called Your Majesty once, which was quite interesting because I had to, I had to say the bench will retire, and we had to walk out so I could finish giggling because um, wasn't quite expecting that one, you know, to put my crown on. But yeah, no, it's anyone who's thinking about doing it, um, by all means, get in touch if you've got any questions, and absolutely happy to help you if you know decide if it's the right thing for you or not. One of the things I will say though, if you want to be a magistrate, you've got to be able to put whatever prejudices you might have about life aside and you focus on facts and evidence. And I think that's one of the things that doesn't get said enough in, in the public world, because often you'll hear people say, oh, the magistrate's got it wrong again, or, oh my God, they granted him bail or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But we can only make a decision or sentence or grant bail or not grant bail, whatever it may be, based on the information before us. Yeah. So if we're yeah. not given the information, then we can only go with what's in front of us. Yes. But I really do good. enjoy it. And I, every time I sit, I learn something new. You know, that it's not a day where you kind of, oh, that was a bit boring. Um, <laughs> you always learn something new, always. Yes, that's great. And just, um, yeah, if you share about the, the book and the authoring, then I want to go on to the journey, which will uh, be a, 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 a big segment. Definitely. So as an author, there's a book that's come out. It's called It Starts With Me. And I've written a chapter in that book. There's 20 of us ladies who have all talked about something that happened to us when we were younger and the impact that had on us to help and shape who we've become today. Mm -hmm. So I'll just tell you a little bit about my chapter, but not too much. So my chapter is about my time in the civil service. And it's very much about an Indian woman in a white man's world and all the challenges, the difficulties, and some of the uncomfortableness that, that goes with that. And um, I'll even share something with you um, just to entice you if you're interested, if you're a reader. So when I became a deputy director um, for the Home Office and I was gonna be head of asylum, which was a big post, um, Somebody said to me, so who did you sleep with? Mm. I didn't know what to say. I was just like, why did you? And I just kind of passed the buck back to them because yeah. I thought, How, what, a, what a comment to make to somebody. In fact, that was the only person who made that comment. Everyone else was like really excited because mm -hmm. by me rising through the career ladder, I was also inspiring others who were coming up the career ladder to say, because I had only ever seen Asian women get to a post of like an HEO, a higher executive officer and not get any further. Yeah. So for me to get like three SEO, so three or four grades higher was, was, a, was a thing. Yeah, yeah. it's pioneering work and you're breaking the ceiling, the yeah. glass ceiling that's there. Exactly. Yeah. So that's just a little snippet. Um, mm. And then the book that I'm working on at the moment, again, is a collaboration called The New Woman. And uh, my chapter is, shh, don't tell anyone. They'll treat you differently. And it all comes from living with a disability. Perfect. That um, brings us nicely to say, um, can you share what your journey is? Some of the challenges and major turning points. And um, yeah. <laughs> the journey from birth because that's where <laughs> so I was born in Uganda and I uh, quite early on um, my mum's sister's friend was playing with me and I kept screaming and um, my mum's sister was a nurse at the time and she said you need to go get sonal checks something's wrong checks all happened and we would I was diagnosed with congenital hip dysplasia I'm, of course, a baby in arms, don't know anything of this, what's going on, um, except that what I was told was I was put in plaster from sort of here down to um, a, just sort of above the knee, but in the frog leg position. So they do that to try and reset your hip because when it's congenital hip dysplasia means that where your hip sits in a socket, mine wasn't sitting in the socket properly. So it was sort of out one way or the other, never get these zoom things right. And um, so by putting it in the frog leg position, what it what it did was um, what it was supposed to do was reset the hip. 
And I think I was in that position for about six to nine months, crying the whole time because, of course, I was a baby and I wanted to play and I wanted to do all the things that babies do. But um, it, it was what it was. And I remember being told that my grandfather used to carry me to the hospital on a regular basis for all my checkups. And then after that period, the plaster came off. And then it was suggested that I come to the UK uh, for follow-up treatment because at that time it was believed UK was better for treatment. I think they probably wouldn't say that now, would they? Um, but uh, so came to UK, saw lots of doctors and things, and they did say to my parents that, you know, she is probably going to struggle most of her life and things will be difficult for her. And you might even find that she's not going to be very tall. And their terminology of not be very tall was three foot, around three foot. Yeah. So as years went on, um, you know, I was at uh, secondary school. So I was 11 years old, 11, 12 years old. My music teacher, Mrs. Minari, I'll never forget her, took me off to an audition. And... Um, there was a mad tall man there with this long black matrix coat. I always remember the matrix coat and uh, we all had to sing and he went around tapping people on the shoulder, but I didn't get a tap. I was really upset. I was like, Oh, what did I do wrong? But actually the fact I didn't get a tap was because I'd actually been selected. So selected for what? Selected to be a child performer with the English national opera and Sadler's Wells. So at the age of 12, I was being escorted to the opera and escorted home and I was getting a wage packet. It was so cool, but it went to dad, of course, but it was so cool to get a wage packet. So I think from an early age, even though I was born with congenital hip dysplasia and I was already being told that there were gonna be challenges, I wasn't gonna let those challenges um, determine who I was um, from that age at all. And then um, again, in my teenage years, I was so brave that um, some of you may know the Edgware Road. I was so brave that I ran across the Edgware Road and I made it. And so I thought, oh, if I can do that, I can run across the residential road. So I ran across the residential road, not realizing that a car was coming and it went bang. And I got rushed to hospital and I'd hurt my ankle and I'd grazed my shoes that were brand new from Clark's. And I was more upset that my dad was gonna tell me off about my shoes than I was with the fact that I'd just been knocked over by a car. So that was incident one, that was the ankle. Um, and then we moved to, I'll take you through the three accidents actually, cause mm. they, were, they were an interesting story. The second accident was in 1996. So I was going to visit my mum, I was in my car so I was driving from my, my flat to my mum's and I was coming to this roundabout. It was empty. So I got onto the roundabout and I'm heading off and I'm about to go off um, at my exit. And this car came steaming down, didn't stop, bang into my car. My car swiveled a few times and I went flying, mentioned earlier, four foot nine in a BMW, tiny, getting thrown about like a roller coaster. And I didn't, you know, I didn't realize at the time just what injuries I had sustained because in my mind, I was still thinking, I need to get my mum's, my mum's expecting me. Mm. Um, we exchanged details and I later found out that this lady wasn't insured, uh, unfortunately, and um, got to my mum's. A couple of days later, I was in real agony, went to the hospital. I'd injured my lower neck, my left shoulder and my lower back. And I thought, okay, I can deal with that and carried on. I even went to India, traveled to India with Shishagunj. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, um, turns out when we came back, my hip was hurting. And that's when we found out that actually the, the accident had dislodged my hip again. Oh, yeah. So uh, I had to go for surgery and I then had surgery called pelvic osteotomy, which is basically they put a metal plate into your hip they put screws in. And for those of you who know the, the Meccano set, um, that's what my hip looks like on an X-ray. So the first couple of years of traveling afterwards, I kept beeping, um, but luckily the, uh, the muscle has grown over it. So I don't beep as much anymore, which is pretty cool. Cause you can imagine the number of people staring at you and you're going, it's my hip, it's my hip. Um, and they're just not believing you. And I'm going, I'll tell you, it's my hip. Um, 
and that was the second one and so from neck left shoulder lower back hip so we've gone from ankle and we're now moving up the body and then we get to the third accident which was actually in um 2018 and i was doing an acting job in london and i was playing the role of a pharmacist and we were doing a night shoot because we were recording in a pharmacy so we had to wait for them to close and um booked my uber taxi got in my uber we're about 10 minutes from home and i'm on my phone as we all tend to do and i look up and i shouted at the driver what the hell are you doing because all I saw was this car. It was almost like if you if you imagine those slow mo videos, you see the lamppost, but you just can't get away from it in time. So this somehow he'd gone from a main road to a lay by, onto a pavement, into a lamppost, into a lamppost. Mm -hmm. Head injury. Uh, my right knee uh, has a tear in the meniscus and I'd aggravated my back, my hip and everything else. So now my consultant just has an absolute laugh with me, just saying, uh, so we've gone from ankle to knees, to hips, to backs, to shoulders, to neck, to head. What's left, on all? Um, <laughs> what's left? Um, but unfortunately, what all of this has done is, um, and predominantly from the 2018 accident, I had to go through lots of tests because I was suffering with a lot of pain and it, and they just couldn't, you know, it wasn't, they checked rheumatology, they checked hematology, they checked gastro, whatever the word is and everything else, um, which is where the fibromyalgia um, diagnosis came in. And then a year ago, unfortunately got COVID um, and, then diagnosed with long COVID. And a lot of the long COVID symptoms are similar to the fibromyalgia symptoms. Yeah. So you're kind of in this catch 22 of like, God, should I just stay in bed all day? You know, let me just stay in bed and let the world go by. And uh, that way I won't be in pain. But even in bed, you're in pain. You know, it's this thing with fibromyalgia. And I'm sure Mary spoke about it a couple of weeks ago. It's just, it's there. It's just constant and you kind of have a choice, you know, am I going to manage this or am I going to pretend it doesn't exist, which actually makes it worse. And what I've done is I've learned to manage it. So like, as you said earlier, days like today where I know I'm going to do a Zoom call and I'm going to be on high energy, positive, um, I need to make sure that I rest which is a huge change for me. It's a huge change for somebody who's going from being hyper, hyper, hyper to I'll just sit back and rest. But I often get asked the question, Shailen, um, but hold on, if you're saying now you've got fibromyalgia and you've got to rest, how are you doing all these things? And it's a really interesting question and I haven't quite got an answer to it, but when I do, I will come back. And the only, the only kind of half-hearted answer I could give really is that I've got what I call a, a team around me. So if it's an event, hubby's going to drive me there. He's going to set it all up and I just need to do my thing. And then he's going to pack down and drive me home. Um, if he's not around, there's a, a team B um, who will do it. And, but it's hard. Anyone who um, has not heard of fibromyalgia, um, I'm, I'm sh hoping everyone's heard of long COVID, but if you don't know somebody who's suffering with it, it's really hard to understand either of them because yeah. they, they really do kind of shatter you, exhaustion, pain. Um, you'd get days where you're really down and then high and it's kind of these moods, you know, and it's not kind of, um, because it's not that you're crazy or mad, although some of my friends might think that I am. But um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. But um, yeah. I, I, I suppose what I'm trying to say is the message here really is that, you know, resilience has got to be at the core of this, that if in your heart, your mind, your soul, you know that, okay, you've put another challenge in front of me. Um, I'm not going to let it stop me from still doing the things that I love and I and make me happy. Um, but I might have to do things a bit differently. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, adapting to 
yeah. uh, 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 making sure it needs met. And, and the other thing is it, it's not overwhelming yourself with everything and working on a basis of to the capacity you can and making sure you're doing the self-care uh, aspects uh, 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 in the team. So yeah, lots of factors there. Definitely. Yeah. And I was just going to finish with a word that we all need to learn is no. I, I was definitely a yes person. And I think in terms of self-care, we just need to learn that word that actually it's okay. If it's, if it's got to be a no, because it's the right thing for you at that time um, to help you with your self-care, go for it. If anyone says anything, just say Sonal Dave said it's okay. Hmm. Brilliant. Oh, that's good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, move on to the next question. But when we come to the Q&A, um, I do want to delve into um, what we had touched upon before of um, uh, Danny, your hubby, and uh, that story. So uh, we'll uh, take it on that one, if that's okay. Absolutely. Because uh, I think that's an important one to share as well. So uh, in terms of, uh, I guess, touching upon that self-care and that what are your daily habits and routines that support you? So I do drink lots of water um, and I, uh, and it will be a mixture of kind of just water or flavoured water because um, otherwise just water can get a bit boring. Mm -hmm. And I eat what I want to eat. I know a lot of people sort of say, oh, you must have your five a day and this a day and that a day. But actually, I think eat what you want to eat, but eat in you know, in reasonable portions, don't, yeah. you know, have that size of chips, you know, I can have mm. chips, but it's just, you know, enough for me. Um, I don't watch the news all day. Oh, my God, I think if I watch the news all day, I think I'd be so depressed at mm. the moment, because all we're hearing is just not good stuff. Uh, so I tend to like, I'll listen to the news, but actually, I'll go off and do other things that actually make me happy. I love listening to music every day. I will listen to my music and I always, there's something about dogs and how they bring out happiness in you, the joy, you know, the, their loyalty, their, mm -hmm. their one sense of fun and wanting to play and, you know, and they just try and make me want to play. And actually by doing that, I find that I'm smiling more and mm -hmm. that smiling more just makes me feel better. Fantastic. Uh, that's great. Um, what is one of your favorite quotes? And so this is, yeah, so go ahead. Think, it's one you mentioned earlier. So it's dare to dream, dare to be different. The world is your stage. So it's not from anyone in particular. It's something that I pulled together when I started my business. And it's very much about everything I have in my business. So dare to dream, you know, follow your dreams, your passions. Again, not the expectations of others your happiness is what it's about dare to be different you know if you want to be a, a a ballerina or an artist or a plumber or a cake maker or whatever it is you want to be yoga instructor go for it absolutely go for it because you know what we've got this life and this world out there and it's our stage isn't it it's our stage so if we're not going to make use of our stage and just do what everything everyone tells us to do and not be happy What's the point? So go and go and follow those dreams and passions and smile and be happy. Perfect. So that dare to dream, dare to be different. The world is your stage by Sono Dave. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> now that's brilliant. And I remember when we were chatting, um, and also uh, when I had the conversation earlier with um, Karupa today, she's trained the call and she's a yoga instructor. Um, well, that's one of the roles she plays now after many different ro other roles she's played and similar to yourself you know a growth mindset and you know working from the, the quote which i think um is quite nice and apt for what you've shared what um uh, karupa uh, will share next week and just i think in general with everyone who's been on inspiration point is um the lovely einstein quote that uh, okay he's got many quotes but uh, and they're all fantastic but this particular one is the one appropriate here which is you know if a fish is judged by its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its whole life thinking it's stupid. And the message there is that you know not everyone is built to climb a tree, but everyone has their own genius, everyone has their own uniqueness. And when we realize what our uniqueness is and what our strengths are and what our passion and purpose is, and we live from those, that's where genius is and that's where you know, we thrive. And that's 
again, you know, uh, tying into the prejudice and the bias and that, and, you know, what we call as the norm, which is not the norm anymore. And yeah. that's, I think, think, the message to bring through on this. And, you know, when you, you know, um, the journey you've taken off, civil service, X number of years, then leaving that in doing some of the things which combine your strengths and your passions and launching a career in, a, in your 50s, which is challenging and learning those skills and doing that, uh, uh, that work uh, is, you know, <laughs> you know, relating to this um, in that manner. So that's great. So what is an achievement that you are proud of? So I'm going to be cheeky and do two, and I hope that's the case. So the first one is being featured in the mail, and that was for starting a career at the age of 50. Mm. Um, so people kind of think, you know, if you've gone past 30, that's it, you know, stay there forever. Um, and if you're not in a happy job, be unhappy for the rest of your life. Whereas actually I, I say to everyone, age is just a number. And actually you can start a new career at any time, even a new hobby you know, whatever it is, remember age is just a number. And leading on from that, the second um, achievement for me would be that, um, again, I didn't follow expectation and I didn't get married till I was in my 40s. And then on top of that, I married somebody who is not a traditional Gujarati man. Um, Danny, my husband, uh, is half Irish and half Indian. His mum's from Trinidad and his dad is from Ireland. And he's also 14 years younger than me. So all three of those things are saying, okay, who, who has put these barriers up that we must do this at this age and follow this and do that? And actually it's our life. So surely we should have a chance to do what makes us happy. And actually I would put money on it and say, if I had been forced to get married in my twenties to somebody that I didn't really know or like, I would have been divorced by now strong independent woman you know wanting to tr travel and live an independent life and what you want me to be in the kitchen cooking for you uh no i don't even do it now danny cooks more than me he's, he's a much better chef than me um so those would definitely be the achievements that um and i think it's so important that you know when when love happens and it's what i call true love real love you know you get each other um in the bad days the good days even an argument with will end with a discussion you know um to understand each person's point of views uh that that's real rather than the the expected yes uh, thank you and that's yeah nicely you know um touches on those points and it's uh, that message of yeah, like you said, not sticking on, breaking stereotypes and doing the things which aren't related to other people's expectations. Uh, so uh, uh, that's really powerful. Great. Um, what is one of your favourite books and why? So it's Jonathan Livingston Seagull by Richard Bach. And I was introduced to it through Shishkunj many, many years ago. Um, I think when um, Ramesh Bairuda, I think, may have introduced me to the book. And um, it's just for those of you who don't know, it's in summary, it's a story of a seagull. And it's a seagull that keeps flying and then drops and then flies and then drops and flies again and then drops, which is pretty much like every one of us. It's our lives. We kind of feel like it's going well and some challenge or barrier hits and we go back down again and then we keep going well and then something else happens. But each time that seagull keeps coming back up, keeps coming back up um, to fly high. And, and I kind of see me as the seagull because from birth really challenges were just thrown at me and were barriers were just put up in front of me and expectations were there even though I chose to ignore them you know it wasn't that they weren't there they were still there um but it's just a book that when I was 14 20s 30s 40s even in my 50s I still learn something from it and I think as as I mature it's almost like the seagull matures or is it as a seagull matures I mature one of one of those ways around yes. but 
Um, it's an amazing book. For those of you who haven't read, read it yet, do definitely get it. Yeah, and it's a fantastic one. It's very thin. And um, my brother had this book and um, I remember reading it years ago. And then I think he passed it again um, recently. And during the lockdown, I read it again and just found so much depth in it. And like I said, you know, relating to a lot of the messages and story in there. Uh, it's yeah, very uh, uh, readable with a lot of uh, yeah, yeah, uh, depth in it. So no, that's great. Um, what did you learn from your parents? So definitely to work hard, avoid the noise, um, should I say the white noise. The noise is all this stuff out there that's very negative and toxic that tries to seep into your lives and that life is short. So, you know, go and follow your dreams and do the things that, that matter. Yeah. And uh, related to that, who and what are your inspirers? So they would they would definitely be my parents. Um, unfortunately, I lost my mum in 2012, um, which was a huge turning point for me. And in fact, it was shortly after that that um, I left the civil service. It was almost that losing my mum was almost that kind of reminder that life is too short. And mm. I was doing something that actually I didn't like. And it was just to pay a mortgage and bills and actually I wasn't enjoying what I was doing. So yeah, definitely my parents. I mean, my mum is my rock still to this day. Um, and I do still look up and ask her, what would you do, mum? And um, I'm sure she sends me messages somehow, but I always always try and do the right thing. Excellent, thank you. Um, is there anything that um, we haven't asked you that you'd like to share or anything we haven't covered that you'd like to share? Um, I think the only other thing I would add is um, as Shailen mentioned right at the beginning, so I also do my acting, my singing, um, and I also do voluntary work, whether it's through my magistrate's work or through my work with Shishkunj and other children's charities and communities as well. I think it's really important for happiness in our lives that we don't pigeonhole ourselves into one thing. You know, if and if there's that one thing that you're doing nine to five, for example, find that other thing that makes you happy. You know, is it going to Zumba classes? Is it going to play golf? You know, what is it that's getting you to do something else that excites you, makes you happy? Because uh, it's so important. Um, otherwise, you know, doing your nine to five, coming home, cooking, cleaning, watching TV, going to bed for the for the rest of your life. Um, it's, it's you yourself are not going to achieve as much as you yourself could if you gave yourself the chance. Absolutely. Now, that's lovely. And with um, some of the stuff that um, I share, which relates to that is, you know, seeing life through the lens of career, relationships and self and making sure you're doing things in each of those areas, as well as the four dimensions of um, the physical, mental, social, emotional and spiritual and making sure that all of those four facets of happiness, health, or the human dimensions, we've got things happening in each of those. And then we feel fulfilled and complete and balanced and in harmony. So that's great. Um, that's fantastic. So that brings us to the end of the core questions. Um, I'm uh, wary that uh, we are uh, just a little bit past our scheduled time. So if, ever, if everyone would say to stay on for another 10 minutes, that'd be great. And we'll cover a few um, more bits and pieces and then um, take um, some of the questions uh, thereafter to continue in that uh, manner. So um, I'm just going to share um, a, a poll. So uh, what we would like to ask um, is just, um, yeah. What we would like to ask is, uh, if you can see the poll on there, it's asking, what is your happiness level at the end of this event compared to what it was at the start? Is it higher? Is it the same? Is it less? Um, uh, would you recommend uh, uh, Happy Life Habits Inspiration Point podcast? And do you know anyone who may be good to take part in a future episode? And so on, I would like you to ask um, Danny to consider um, coming on at some stage when we do a, a new series and a new set of episodes. And I think there could be an interesting uh, story to hear uh, <laughs> from that side. So that's uh, uh, what uh, would be great. Um, 
So yeah, if, you, if everyone is able to just take a, a couple of seconds to answer that, this is all um, beneficial for us to uh, know that we're doing the right things and uh, how we can work on uh, the things there. Um, great. So I'm going to stop the poll now. Thank you all for sharing that. And I am going to just share um, the screen again. And um, is there anything in the um, chat that we yep. pick up first? Um, um, well, what I'll do is uh, we'll, we'll keep that in uh, a moment. There's a few things um, that are coming through on there. So, okay. it, 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 yeah, if, if I just cover these bits off and then we'll, so that's, uh, so uh, if um, you want to find out more about um, what uh, Sonal Ben is up to, the courses she's offering, um, it's at sonaldave.com, the website, and also um, she has got um, some training in um, and things she's taking part in next week, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, geared towards um, children, uh, where uh, Sonal is uh, one of the speakers amongst uh, 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 others in the summit. Um, if you'd like to uh, just share a, a, a bit about that, what date you're on and what, what you're covering, so I know that would be uh, so, good, and um, I'll have so a look at it. 14th, 15th, and 16th, there's um, a kids' summit happening, and it includes things like myself doing public speaking and confidence, there's creative writing, there's some financial stuff, there's working in the outdoors. So there's lots of different... Um, ideas for kids rather than just being in a classroom, for example. Um, it's free uh, and it's on the 14th, 15th and 16th. I'm on on the 15th, which is day two. And uh, if you're interested, um, it will definitely, I know it's definitely going to be on my Facebook page, which is Sonal Dave 68. And it is supposed to be going up on my website, but you know what these technical people are like. Um, it will be done, it will be done, it will be done. But if you want immediate um, information about it, uh, go to Facebook and look for Sonal Dave 68, or just contact me at um, sonal at sonaldave.com, uh, which is my email address, and I can share the details directly with you. But it's a three day summit, it's for children. Um, and parents as well, because parents can find out what's available for the children through all the different speakers as well. But a great opportunity, especially because it's free. Yeah. And also feel free to post it in the Happy Life Habits community group okay. as well. Thank you. Share it on there. So that's great. So the, one of the questions we had was, what was um, your favourite book? She didn't um, answer, uh, didn't catch the name. It's Jonathan Livingston Seagull. By Richard Bach. Yep. Yep. Okay. And that's B Bach, B A C H. Okay. And um, we have a question from Tracy. Uh, what advice would you give to a young person who feels they don't fit in, uh, fit on with the rest of the crowd? And do you do any inspiration works or talk to young people, particularly teenagers? Um, so it's interesting and it's a really, really, really good question there, Tracy. So with children and to be honest, with children and with adults, when there's an element of not fitting in or feeling uncomfortable in the moment, it's usually something around self-acceptance. I say usually because sometimes there can be underlying issues for example it could be learning difficulties autism could be the reason but if it's not any of those reasons then usually it's around self-acceptance so often and as I said this is children and adults have a fear of being judged have a fear of what others might think have a fear of getting things wrong forgetting what to say um, are they going to look at me and think I'm ugly or you know four eyes or big ears or whatever it is, you know, uh, is that person good enough? You know, will, will that group of children like me as well? Especially we've got a cliquey group already, you know, to step into that um, group, whether it's children or it's adults in a networking environment, for example. So self-acceptance is really important. And what self-acceptance is, is acceptance of how you look and how you sound. So for example, today I've purposely come on, no makeup, I've not done my hair, and this is me. And I'm all right with that. 
you I hope you're all okay with that as well but it's really important because if I was sitting here talking to you about all of this but I was worried about how, what you might think about me and my face and my hair and she's moving her hands around a lot and will they like the sound of my voice you know am I giggling at my own jokes and are you not getting the jokes then it just wouldn't work so there's a whole lot of learning around self-acceptance that really does need to happen first um uh, if it's a young person or an adult I do do inspirational um, work and I also do inspirational talks as well what's worked really well during the pandemic is um, something Shaley mentioned earlier was the online courses um, and these are online courses that uh, the child or the adult does in the comfort of their own home at a pace that works for them with no pressure and no competition and when they finish the course there's a little test they do at the end and it's a video of themselves talking about something that that they enjoy they choose the subject and then they that video is sent to me and then i have a moment with them where we talk about what i saw as an independent person what did i see from their body language from their voice you know little and then i give them little tips as well on top of that of um what they could do to make things slightly better so i hope that answers your question but um, if not, please add something else in the chat. Thanks, Tracy. That was a really good question. Great. Um, I think that is what was mainly there in terms of um, questions. Um, Shandip has shared you know, huge inspiration. Um, you always uh, uh, you always have been very inspirational and known you for many years and keep the great work. And thanks again, you know, Shandip, for connecting Tunnel to so many of the um, communities. Uh, uh, for us, but that's great. Um, I'm just going to um, uh, uh, go towards um, the wrap up, um, and uh, if there's any more questions, we can continue for those who want to stay on thereafter, but um, uh, officially come to a close in a moment. Um, again, it's Shandip and Barnett Consultancy, thank you so much for sponsoring the whole series. Um, really appreciate it, and it's just, yeah, wonderful having that support in there. Uh, there, there from uh, you guys, so really thankful for that. Um, as I mentioned, um, this is episode five of um, six episodes. It's, each episode is just been wonderful in its own right. And um, we do come to a conclusion next week uh, with Karupa joining us for episode six of this series three. And it would have been 12 weeks back to back that we've been sharing this through, you know, this lockdown period. Um, and sharing you know, this one hour of, um, or one hour plus of, you know, inspiration, positivity, um, and journeys. And so, a, a, a short uh, a, a, a coverage on uh, Karupa. Uh, she, uh, and we caught up earlier today. Uh, so she's, again, had a varied career, a job at Top Man, then a management consultancy, went on holiday um, to uh, 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 one of the beach islands, um, got uh, hired uh, as a dancer and ended up running a bar there um, for two years. Um, joined the BA cabin crew um, and uh, helped in uh, as a mental health worker and ended up uh, uh, doing yoga and now teaching yoga and sharing yoga. So I'm very much you know a person who's gone through a variety of careers, let go of things and moved on and had a growth mindset and didn't go down. Um, the traditional route of you know university education circumstances was such that um, she needs to go into the workspace and she did wholeheartedly and has picked up a variety of experiences which she's taken with her from journey to journey and seen life as an adventure and letting it unfold and um, over the last two years um, being someone who's been challenged with cancer and we won't say the uh, battling cancer and she'll explain why next week and we won't say a cancer survivor, it's a cancer warrior. And again, we'll find out next week. And um, the autobiography of a yogi being one of her favorite books, which um, gave her a, a big flip. So we'll learn more about that um, next week. Um, the Happy Life Habits Strategy and Journal course is now ready for June and November intake. Um, June, we've got two sessions, one in the morning, one in the evening. The dates there, they're on the website, and uh, till mid uh, May, uh, we can lock in the price for June or um, November, and thereafter the price will go up. But it's a fantastic course, and uh, Karupa is one of our graduates from um, 
the course as well, as many as, uh, as well as some of our previous speakers. So if you are thinking of building a new hack in gratitude or journaling or want to just you know uh, uh, deepen your practice, really consider this and feel free to have a chat or look on the website to find out more. Um, yeah, I'll uh, skip this one apart from the same Next week, you can use the guest code, uh, sorry, the promo code guest and invite family and friends for this final session um, that we will be having. And yep, yeah, I'll skip this in the uh, information on the website of the talk that I'm doing next week. And I will say um, thank you've got, you. You've got a couple more questions, Shailen. I don't know if you want yeah. to take them. <laughs> yeah, we will do, but I'll officially let those who want to drop off, drop off and just say, Thank you all for joining us, Sonal Ben. Thank you so much for um, sharing your journey with us and uh, uh, being with us and resting today so that you can give us your full energy. And those of you who and would like to stay on for a, a few more minutes to uh, um, take these questions, please do so. And those of you who uh, do need to uh, drop off, please uh, feel free to drop off and the recordings will be up on the website in a few weeks so you can catch up those last few bits there. So. Let's see, what do we have? Um, did you spot a question? Um, from Asan, was it? Thank you. Uh, how do you balance the good and the not so good days? Or do you take every day to be a good day? No, um, every day is not a good day. Um, and the balance really is that I try and make sure I'm aware of what's happening um, each day. So if I was, for example, doing this Zoom call, uh, tomorrow morning, I would make sure that today was, I would do something today morning, but then I would make sure I keep a lot of the rest of the day free, mainly because unfortunately long COVID has affected my respiratory system. And because of that, um, my voice, which I use in absolutely everything that I do, uh, doesn't have the power and strength that it would have had before COVID. So I have to manage it really, Coming, going back to what we were talking about, do you just ignore it or do you manage it? However, on the not so good days when pain levels are really, really high, um, I acknowledge it. That's what I've learned. I've learned to acknowledge that I'm in pain. Um, a while back, I would have felt guilty for just having a lie down on the sofa in the afternoon. Now I acknowledge I'm in pain, I lie down on the sofa. It's a real different change in how I used to think, but I accept I'm gonna have some not so good days and I manage them in the way that works for me, which is accept that as much as I might wanna, you know, run around and play with um, Neo and Re, I might actually have to just let them run around in the garden while I rest. It's hard, it is hard, because I usually wanna be running around um, trying to do a lot more. And um, Asan said, is there a new hobby or something you would like to do that you've not started yet? Is there a new hobby or something? Yes, I'd like to be a travel blogger and for somebody to pay for me to travel everywhere and blog about it because I love I love writing. And I think when I first got the chance to be part of the first collaboration book and then the second and then there's a, a third one happening as well. Um, I, I realized I love writing. Um, so I think that would, and writing and travel. So if I could merge the two, can you make that happen, Asan? Is it Asan? And I hope I'm saying that yep. right. Asan, if, you can, yes. if you can help me make that happen, that would be amazing. Fantastic. No, that's brilliant. Um, we look forward to hearing that journey when, uh, when that one does happen. So no, um, again, we have been a really um, heartfelt thank you, Solo, for spending your time with us, sharing your journey and being so open with, um, uh, 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 the challenges and uh, 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 the tribulations and celebrations uh, uh, that have been part of your life and keeping, you know, that time um, to keep the best of your energy um, for the this evening session. So we really appreciate uh, taking that time for that um, so much. And thank you all for, um, for uh, joining us and being part of uh, uh, this episode. Uh, so and look forward to seeing um, all of you uh, next week. So with that, um, good night and take care, everyone. And thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking part. It's been lovely um, seeing, meeting, hearing you all. Perfect.
bye Tracy. She's put her camera on so I can say bye now. <laughs>